special project. <laughs> Hey, yes, action. Welcome to a new series here at GoFast called Special Projects, where we discuss all things special when it comes to projects at GoFast. The first special project that we're gonna go through with you is the diesel heater. If you've been watching us closely on social media and watching our YouTube videos, you might have seen this. I would roll out of the truck this way and smash onto the floor, but this is concrete, so I'm gonna hop out and come around and show you this thing. So if you've done any research into a diesel heater, you know that it is a decision matrix pain in the ass. There are pretty much two options for diesel heaters. One of them is buying a Chinese thing that will kill you in your sleep. The second option is spending a lot of money on something that's a huge project. So when it came to choosing what heater we wanted to run in our campers, we wanted to pick the buy once, cry once, correct solution. We didn't want to get some Chinese heater that's gonna have reliability problems and smoke you or your occupants out with carbon monoxide and cause all sorts of headaches. Those products exist on the market, we don't run them. So this right here is the Eberspacher unit, which is what you'll find in every diesel semi-truck in North America. Every semi-truck in North America, I guess, is a diesel, so every truck in North America. So this is the parking heater. So once you pull over at the truck stop and you turn the engine off, this is what's running off the diesel tank to keep those spaces climate controlled. So they're used at all sorts of elevations. There's service centers all over the country and Eversparker went as far as to actually send an engineer out to our shop to approve and certify our installation and confirm that all of our ideas and all of our concepts were in line with their brand values. And those guys are based in Germany. These heaters are made in Europe. It's a super high quality piece of kit. Basically everything else on the market is a knockoff of this unit. So. What's really cool about this system is it's super reliable and it's all mounted internally. I'll go through kind of each part of the system here and kind of how it works. And then we're gonna bring Thomas in who's been out testing this thing in the field for three weeks. So having the side panel open here obviously isn't how you'd run this heater, but it's the best way to show you all the components that go into the system. So you got the heater unit right here that mounts to the side panel and the heater can operate in a 90 degree orientation. So you can run the heater when the side panel is open. In here, you have this main chassis that mounts to the space frame of the camper. And these boxes are have a custom fit kit that go to the camper that it's intended to mount to. And in here, you'll see that there's a fuel tank, it's 2.1 gallons, and a full custom wiring harness that integrates this whole system. On the outside right here, you've got a little thermostat, so you can set the temperature, set the time, a bunch of other really cool features we'll jump into later that allow you to have this thing be your mobile ski chalet and come back to a warm camper after a long day. So the way these heaters work is it's like an old air-cooled engine, like an old Honda dirt bike or a Volkswagen. You've got a motor in here that gets really hot. There's a fan on the backside and it pulls air across those cooling fins on that motor. And then that hot exhaust air blows out right there. So the exhaust from the combustion process vents out the side panel but the, the heated air in the heater actually blows out of this valve. So when it came to picking a place to put this heater, we wanted to run it in a place that's really easy to access upstairs. So on the Max, you've got a 20 inch constant opening in the rear, and then on Pro and other legacy campers, a lot of folks run their small square cushions in the back here. And what's cool for that integration in the future is we can actually take one of these cushions, cut it in half, so you could leave a small rectangle out that runs the heat up the stairs into an older Pro or an older V2. The other neat thing that we designed here is a mixing valve that after a bunch of testing is able to route air both up and down. So it's got kind of a louvered head that pushes air both ways. So you can kind of climate control lower and upper simultaneously. And it is aimable. So you can spin it and position it kind of where you want it to be. So if you want to mostly push the hot air up, you can. In testing, we've seen about a 70 degree temperature differential with no insulation kit whatsoever. So no insulation kit upstairs in the tent, nothing downstairs. We're in an aluminum bed on a Ford, which is probably the worst thermal efficacy, conductivity design parameter. It's like the coldest possible camper. And we can keep it seven degrees warmer than the outside ambient temp. So if it's zero degrees outside, pretty much 70 inside. So this unit is going to be mounted on the rear of the camper. Currently, we are only planning on having it mounted on the driver's side rear. 
So we've got an awning that we're working on as well. That thing wraps around the passenger side. We want to optimize access on the passenger side of the camper for activities and grabbing stuff out of the side of the bed. This area is what we're designing kind of as a utility closet. So we think that the driver's side in our experience building thousands of these things is absolutely 100% the best place to put these things. But that's part of what these videos are for. So if you guys have feedback that you think, hey, I wish this was different or I have an idea why we should consider it, let us know in the comments. We can totally take a look at those ideas, take that feedback, and we can at least answer why we agree or disagree. And we'd love to work with you guys to make sure that we're making solutions that you guys are stoked on. But in our experience, this has been super bitching. Speaking of the experience, I wanna throw Thomas into this video. He's been out in the field with this thing for the past three weeks, testing it every single night, and has got quite a few nights in it. So we'll let Thomas take it from here. Hey guys, I'm Thomas, part of the marketing team here at GoFast, and I just spent the last 22 days-ish in this camper consecutively using this heater every night. Out of 22 days, I think it was sunny three days, including raining in Mexico, raining in SoCal, obviously raining in the P&W, and I camped through the whole situation in this camper with this heater, and it made it from like a tent on top of a truck to an actual camper. For the longest time, I've been a heater hater. I just thought, I thought heaters were dumb, you don't need them. Get a nice bag, a uh, heated blanket, whatever you wanna do. Um, my life has been changed. Especially when you're dealing with weather like that on a trip like that, having a heated space, top and bottom, is game changer. Your shoes dry out, you're not wet when you go to bed, it's warm, you don't have to worry about being cold in the middle of the night. Normally running the gas heater with this 2.1 gallon tank, you can get around two and a half nights if you're running it all night long. This actually has a really cool feature on it where you can set the temperature and the time. So you can set it to run for two hours or three hours, turn off, and then it actually has a date and time function. So you can set it for tomorrow morning at four in the morning. So it heats up as it would normally be losing heat in the top. So that's a good way to kind of maximize what this tank will do. Uh, but for me, did not want to be cold. Ran it the entire time, got two and a half nights out of it and it was so comfortable. To fill it up with fuel, you just take the cap off the tank, fill it up with the pump, fill it up with a jerry can, put the cap back on, and you're good to go. This thing right here is the brain of the whole operation. You can use it to set the temperature, the amount of time you want it to run, and even date and time. So if you're coming off the ski hill, you can set it to warm up at 3 p.m., and by the time you get off the hill, it's nice and warm down here in the bottom. Other things to note about this heater is how quickly it heats up. From time of turning it on to blowing hot air is less than five minutes. So by the time you're done brushing your teeth and getting ready for bed, you got a nice toasty space upstairs. Also, no ticking noise, no rumbling, no beeping, no annoying noises. This thing is silent. So that about sums up the functionality and kind of design behind the diesel heater. Outside you can see right here, you've got your exhaust port. It's a shiny, chrome fitting. We're working on getting these Cerakoted black so it kind of sits a little more stealth. Using some temporary stainless harbors right there. So that'll be switched to something more along the lines of these black oxide aluminized zinc galvanic corrosion mitigating fasteners. Just normal GFC stuff. A couple of questions I've seen online about this thing are why a diesel heater over a propane heater or over an electric blanket? And the energy density of diesel fuel is really, really good. They perform really well in cold weather. So a lot of propane regulators are prone to freezing in really cold weather when you wanna use this thing the most. We're up in Montana where we see temperatures regularly in the negative teens, negative 20s. And if we're wanting to go camping, we don't wanna have our thing frozen over and not be able to go use a product we bought. So big design parameter behind this thing is performance in all temperatures. The Eberspacher is good to like 17,000 feet of elevation, which if you drive to the highest point anyone's ever driven to in South America, off-road on a volcano, maybe you could exceed this thing in its peak efficiency zones, but 17,000 feet is really high. I don't think you can drive that high in the wintertime anywhere in North America. In terms of installation, retrofitting this thing into new orders and existing campers, there's really not a lot that goes into installing this product from a modification of like our main camper chassis standpoint. So you've got one big hole for the exhaust port here. It's a two inch hole and then three small holes 
that are kind of loose in the field and then three around here. So a simple drill jig will make that a pretty easy job. This guy right here grabs into two of the existing plus nuts and then requires two more to be drilled. But again, pretty light work. The harness is already all turned in, um, tied into this thing, pretty turnkey. So packaging wise, simple integration is about as easy as it gets for something that's this complicated. And then service, that's a huge part about this thing, is if you have any issues with this, we don't want you to be high and dry around on a road trip. So this is a product that can be serviced at any semi-truck station around the country. There's Eberspacher dealers at um, farm supply shops and semi-truck shops all over the nation. So it's a cool thing, great national support, really good brand that we like working with. They really care about us our product, our consumers, our community, and we've been really, really happy with this. So if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We would be more than happy to look at your guys' feedback, kind of answer any other questions that we have. We had a couple questions on the Facebook group, Go Fast Camper Owners. If you haven't seen that yet, it's a good place to talk to other people about modifying campers and doing stuff like this. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you out there.